In my haste to fit the crank pins to all the wheels, I completely missed that the pins on the driving wheels need to be correctly positioned with respect to the squared off end. And to do so, I need to make both the return cranks and the crank pin setting jig as laid out on Don's drawings. So in this video, I'll cover off the making of the return cranks and I'll come back in a later video with refitting the crank pins correctly. Although I've converted Don's design from Imperial into metric, I have retained the key dimension, which is the distance between the driving pin center and the center of the pin for the eccentric rod. Don's design calls this out as 1.08 inches, which equates to 27.43 millimeters. For material, I'll use some gauge plate. I've got a quarter inch piece here. First, I'll use a Sharpie to mark off a section wide enough to make one return crank. I then cut this off using my chop saw and do likewise for a second part. I now clean both the pieces up with some acetone and lock tighten them together. Once the Loctite has gone off, I clean up both the long sides and one end in the milling machine. When I convert the detail from Don's drawings from Imperial to metric, I don't just whip out my calculator and substitute his dimensions with the nearest metric equivalents. I actually transfer the details into a CAD package. This is just a free package I'm using in LibreCAD. One of the advantages of doing it this way is I can easily reorientate all of my dimensions. So when it comes to marking out things like this return crank, it becomes a relatively simple job to take the dimensions from my reference surfaces. In this case, one of the long sides and one of the ends. With the outline partly marked out, I move on to the milling machine, use an edge finder to find my reference faces, the back edge and the far end in this case, and then using the DRO, I drill the two holes, one for the crank pin and the other for the eccentric rod pin. To rough cut the outline, I start off with an end mill to move some of the excess material, then I move on to the vise and some good old manual work with the files. After getting the profile roughed out, I move on to the milling machine. Here I use a rotary table for the rounded parts. So that will be the end for the eccentric rod pin and also the section around the driving crank pin. My approach is to turn a little mandrel, the bulk of the body being 12mm which will fit nicely into a 12mm collet and then a stub at the end which I've turned to the respective hole size. I then secure the mandrel into the collet on the rotary table and then bolt the rotary table to the milling table. Because I'm using a relatively small diameter end mill in the milling machine, I'm not going to be able to machine both the parts as one, so I apply some heat to break the Loctite and separate the two pieces. I can now use the mandrel to locate the return crank on the rotary table and clamp it into position. After positioning the centre of the rotary table directly under the centre of the quill, it's now just a case of offsetting on one axis. In my case, I tend to offset on the Y axis and then using an end mill to machine the rounded end. I'm looking for an 11 mil diameter at this end of the return crank. So that gives a 5.5 radius and I'm using a three mil end mill. So ultimately I need to work down to an offset of seven mil on the Y axis. Given the small diameter of the end mill, I'm only doing shallow cuts. So I'm going down each time to a maximum of 0.2 millimeters. In terms of the limits of travel on the rotary table, I'm doing this very much by eye, working to the scribe lines that are on the top of the return crank. They're not visible in the video here. I did get pulled up in one of my previous videos for using my fingers to align the pointer. So I now use the open end of a spanner. I guess it is a bit safer. After a bit of repositioning of both the main table and the rotary table, I use the wiggler to align the top side of the return crank to the X axis, and then use the same end mill to put the finish cut on that surface. And then of course do the same for the other side. 
to round off the section of the return crank that sits around the crank pin. I follow the same process I did for the end by using the rotary table and offsetting on the Y axis. After a bit of a clean up with some files, I then repeat for the other return crank. Looking good. Before I pull out the needle files to start working on the square section here that fits over the crank pin, I'm going to profile the crank from the side elevation. I started off with some quarter inch gauge plate, which of course is 6.35mm, and I now need to reduce the thickness of the section that fits over the crank pin as well as a section in the middle. So I need to reduce from 6.35 down to 5.6 mil and then from there down to 3.45 mil. To reduce the thickness of the end of the return crank it's a simple case of clamping it onto the milling table and using a chunky end mill. This one is actually a bit blunt and I should have changed that out for something a bit sharper. To reduce the thickness for the rest of the return crank I've made this little jig. Basically it's just a bit of 10mm plate clamped into the vise, but I've drilled and tapped two holes that are lined to the centre of the holes in the return crank. And as the centre line for those holes is parallel to the bottom of this plate, the return crank is being held level with respect to the milling table. To secure it I'm using a 4mm bolt at one end, but for this end I've turned a little bolt which has got a 5.5mm shoulder, again to ensure that the return crank is held parallel with respect to the table. With the jig set up and a small end mill fitted, it now becomes a simple job to machine that part of the profile. As the shape is more cosmetic, I've actually lined up the ends of the run here, as in left to right by eye, but once I've done the first cut, I do refer to the DRO for the limits of travel. And the real beauty with using such a jig is that it's very repeatable. So once I've finished the first return crank, I just swap it out for the other one and machine to the same dimensions. Before I can file out the square section that will ultimately sit around the crank pin, I'm going to need to mark it out. To do that, I've just turned this little button with a square end, 5.5mm diameter shoulder, which will sit nicely in the hole that I've drilled. And as it's drilled and tapped to the centre, I can bolt it into place. And now I can scribe the outline. There are two holes that need to be drilled. The first hole here on the right is for the clamping bolt. The drawing doesn't give a great deal of information, just specifies it as a number 44 size hole, so 2.2mm for me. I'm going to go with an 8mm bolt, so I'm going to drill all the way through at tapping size, tap around about halfway through, turn it over top to bottom, and then drill the other half as clearance. And of course the two will be divided by the slit I've yet to cut. The other hole I need to drill is for a 1 16th taper pin which passes right through the return crank and just touches on one of the squared off corners of the crank pin. I don't actually have a 1 16th taper reamer but I do have a 332 so I use that instead. With my setup here I don't have enough clearance to put the reamer in far enough but I saw that later out on the bench. The last operation I need to carry out on the return cranks is to cut a slot for the clamping arrangement. The drawing calls for this slot to be 1.6mm wide but I've only got one or two mil slitting saws so I've decided to go with two mil. 
I start the cut with both bolts in place, but once it's established, I stop and remove the bolt here on the right hand side because I need to cut right through where it's located. And we can see I've also got a clamp on to give a little bit more support and rigidity. And if it's not obvious, I am cutting through both the return crank and the plate it's mounted against. Once I've completed for the first, it's a simple job to swap out with the other return crank and repeat the cut. To finish off a few minutes with the needle files and some memory cloth was required and I also needed to just put that little nick on the corner of the crank pin which hopefully you can see here in the picture. This was a lot of effort for two very small parts but I think the results are good. In the next video I'll cover off the refitting of the crank pins for the driving wheels in the correct position. As always, thank you for watching.